So I'm like, I'm gonna put a big name on it. Yeah. I couldn't play Uno because they had to verify my license. I was like, verify? Oh, so then I'm like, oh boy. So I'm thinking that there's something wrong with my internet because it can't connect to the thing. Yeah. So I'm just sitting there, I'm gonna set my router like I said to you. I messed up my internet, so I don't have any internet now. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I just put my hot spot on and played that for Yeah. I'm working just fine. Sometimes I'm a little bit loud, but. Yeah, they were, they're doing madness today, so. Should be fixed by either today or tomorrow. I thought it was done. I thought it was done. It did it at midnight, but. Yeah. It's not a shame it's working. Oh, well, yeah, but. Today, all we're going to talk about, um, we're going to do a couple couple notes on simplifying fractions. Um, we're going to go over like how to take a fraction, write it, um, how to take like a diagram, write a fraction, or vice versa. You can do, do a fraction, write the diagram for it. I'll explain how the homework is going to work today because you are going to get homework on this today. So we do on Thursday now. Forewarning, um, parents and teacher conferences are tomorrow, so I always encourage all parents to come. So if you want to tell your parents, um, I, my office hours tomorrow are different than everyone else's. Um, my office hours tomorrow, I'm here from like 4 to 5.30ish, and then I leave for volleyball. Because we have a volleyball decision. Um, so I won't be here after 5.30 tomorrow. Thursday, I'm here for 4 or whatever. So they can come in the second day if they, if they want. If they don't come in, it's not a big deal. They can just check their grade on the line. It's only if like they really want to talk to me, I always encourage. So I always applaud that. Um, Wednesday, I know we don't have school this week. Uh, teachers, you go to week on, you guys do. And then Thursday, I'm gone. I'm gone Thursday. I'm not here. I'm out of the building. Um, I'm over at the ADA office all day. So you'll have a sub on Thursday, and it'll be kind of just a work day where you can work on some stuff. It'll be easy. We'll do the notes tomorrow, what you'll get from them on Thursday. So the sub will just hand you whatever you need. Um, so, um, but today is pretty straightforward. Um, tomorrow we'll finish the notes and what we need to do. So, um, okay, here's the section we're on. We're on the section. Um, on section 3.1, which is on fractions. <coughs> so the intro to what fractions are. So um, the goal today is to look at you know what the definition of a fraction is one more time. Uh, we're going to look at you know um, graphical notation, like how do you graph it or 
sketch of sketch an actual fraction so I can show you draw a picture that, that represents what a fraction is. And then our other main goal here, other than the definition, because I go to the graph and sketch, we're going to look at how to simplify, which is what we talked about on Friday. And there's a bunch of different ways to simplify. And um, you know, what I introed um, Friday was, you know, we had you could look at you know, greatest common factors, greatest common factors. You could do um, the divisibility test to see what you can divide out. Some people are really good at that. They can remember those tests really well. So divisibility test. Um, and then the last one is the one I actually wanted to do. And this is by doing it by prime factorization. And that's the one I prefer. It's like um, it's like a cancellation method. I'll show you that one today. I, I'm almost guaranteeing you're you're gonna know how to do it. You know, because you'll probably remember what we did Friday and it's pretty straightforward. But I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, we all understand this. So after lunch today, you'll get homework on it. Um, homework um, will be due this assignment will be due tomorrow. So it's one of the rare chances that um, that it's due like the very next day, just because I'm not here Wednesday. So or we're, we're not here Wednesday. So this is one that you, you cannot waste time. You, you're going to have to work on it today. Um, all right, so let's talk about the first thing. Let's talk about the definition of what a fraction is. What do you remember about fractions? It's a ratio. It's a ratio. Yeah, that's a big deal, right? It is a ratio. And if you don't know what a ratio is, it's comparing numbers using division. Comparison of two digits. Way you write it, and that's what a ratio is by definition. So the different ways it looks like we can have, you know, um, with a ratio, it can be that typical fraction bar. Uh, so you have a number on the top, you have a number on the bottom, whatever those numbers are. You can you can write it the same way, but you use the total of a fraction bar, or you use the colon method. Like that. Those those all mean the same. How this works, this is the top digit. This is the numerator. That's the idea. So the, the, uh, these would all be the numerator. And the numerator is also known as the divider. So if you're going to divide these like long division, but we'll see that later, because like later sections. Um, if we were to do long division with this stuff, that number that I circled on each of those like those ways, those numbers go in the house. The bottom number, or the number in the back, that's the number that goes outside the house for long division. So it's the divider number. Okay, questions on the definition. I haven't talked about yesterday, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's do an example here. So um, let's do an example where we do something like 5 out of 12. You agree that's a fraction. Um, 5 out of 12 cannot be simplified. The reason why 5 is the prime number, 12 literally doesn't have a prime number. You know, it's got 1s, 12s, 2s, and 6s, or even more. It doesn't have a 5. So that fraction is simplified. Um, so um, the top number is, the, is, you know, how many you have. The bottom is the total options available. That's the, that's the idea. Okay, but how do we draw it? What's a sketch? brownies are going to be in those paints. Twelve total. How many are left? Five. Five. That's the idea. So to do twelve brownies, you can do one, two, three, four, five, six. They're all supposed to be the same size, but normally they're more like the big talent. And there is five left. So here's my five. And you can put them anywhere you want. I just shade in the ones that are left. That's a graphical representation. You will have to do that today. You will have to draw the sketch of what your fraction is that's left. The simplified version of it. So if your fraction can't go any further, that's what I want you to draw. The problem is, the, the, I know the pan of brownies graph, that is by far the easiest to draw. It is. Um, um, 
there's different ways of drawing it. Now the other the other way to draw, other than using like this little like bar graph, a little like pan of brownie, what's the other picture on those? What's the other the circle graph, right? The circle graph is by far more difficult. Um, just because you have to make sure that every piece is the same size. So, for instance, I need to make sure that every piece of this pizza is exactly the same size. So there's got to be 12 total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, total. And there'd be five left. In fact, basically any graph is easier with the even numbers. Um, when, once they become odd, now you really you have to really think outside the box. You know, if I had an odd number on the bottom, let's say I had like the number, um, say I have the number seven on the bottom instead of you know the twelve. You know, so seven, seven and five being two twelve. How I would do this? I'd do the pan and brownies idea instead of doing the circle graph, and I would just make it one long pan. <laughs> you just have seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you know, we thought of her? Please come to the office. Other than <coughs> trying to do two rows, you don't need to do that. You can just do the old way where you just break into seven, seven pieces of each and five of them. Um, so that's how it, that's how to accomplish odd numbers. I would never attempt to do a pizza graph, like a pie graph with odd numbers. You can, don't get me wrong. You can most definitely do it. It's just very, very, very difficult when it's odd numbers. It's not going to be as easy. All right. Any questions with the idea of how to draw it? I didn't finish that one. I should. Five or less. Okay. Second topic. We need to look, look at how to simplify fractions, and I want to do it by my method today. My method where we use prime factor and how we simplify fractions. So um, let me give you an example here of what I want. Um, let's say my problem is, uh, we're going to start with an easy one. Let's go, let's, go six, let's go 6 out of 20. Let's do this first. Okay, so 6 out of 20. Um, so how this works, how I want you to simplify this, because I know that both numbers are even, you know, 6 and 20. So I know that they're going to have some numbers in common. We know that. Um, just because of the way this works. Or I know like they both have 5 in common or something like that. So here's how I want you to simplify fractions before you have to attempt to do it. <coughs> You will have to draw the ones that um, that they ask you to simplify. <laughs> so to do that, here's what I want. I want you to break up six into all the numbers you possibly can. So only using prime factorization. Don't do a factor three. So what do you know that multiplies two to six? Three and two. That's the way you write. You write three and two. That's what I want you to do first. Just instantly. What are the numbers that multiply to be six? What are the numbers that multiply to be twenty? Two and ten. Two and ten. Yes. 10. And then, or if you were that 5 and 4 person, fine. Um, you write those down. And then you try to break up these numbers if you can. Like 10 can be broken up. What is 10 broken up? Uh, 5 and 6. 5 and 6. Boom. That's, I'm breaking up the numbers as far as you can, as fast as you can. Like, don't put any real, like, crazy mental effort into it. Um, so now that we're here, now what you're allowed to do is you're allowed to simplify stuff. Things that they have in common, they have two in common. Cross them out. Top and bottom, one for one. That's how it works. Okay, so at this point, is there any other things that they have in common? No. no. So your final answer, three's on the top, and on the bottom I have a two and the five. What does that mean? Ten. That's your final answer. That's your final answer. That's the one you need to draw right now. That's the one I draw. So if I'm going to draw that, I'm going to have to draw a pie with ten pieces on it. I'm going to have to shade in three of them and left. So I don't care if you use pizza or the pan of brownies, it really doesn't matter. I'll do the brownies because that's easy enough. So here's my two rows, I'm going to make five. And I'm going to shade in three one letter left. And try your best to make them the about the same size. That's what I always try to do. Okay, questions? How that works? Let's do another one, just to get some practice on it. Um, use something maybe a little more challenging. Let's go. I'll let you have 
some times where you can try to do it by yourself. I want to see if you can simplify this fraction down and then draw it. Now, if you need a calculator, I can do this. But, um, preferably, you're not using your calculator today. That's what I want to do. <coughs> preferably. Yeah, I want to see your church. Um, church are fine. I can, I can deal with the church. But maybe not a fraction or a calculator today. Because I know I've taught you last week um, how to use a calculator. You just don't want you to do that. I want you to try to avoid the calculator for right now. When we get to the upper sections, we can use a calculator again. So you know how to do it like that. And again, when we get there, I'll review how to do it again. Okay. I'll give you a few minutes here, and then um, maybe I'll give you four minutes, five minutes, and then I'll, we'll take a look and I want to see what you're drawing. Remember, try to cross out all the numbers you can, top, bottom, and once you're done, I want to see you draw it. <coughs> it should be very easy. It should simplify it pretty far. So that's what I want to make sure of. It's always like January like eighth or something. It's that first Friday at the end of the January. Or first Friday in the beginning. So I'm going to work my way around the room and see kind of how we did it. So, uh, Sean, you're up first. What are numbers that multiply between 18, please? Um, 9 and 2. 9 and 2. Okay, I agree with that. All right. Let's keep going around the room. Jason, what are numbers that multiply to give you 24? What were the first numbers you thought of? 2 and 12. 2 and 12. Okay. Now, if you did not pick those numbers, you're fine. You are fine because these numbers can be broken up. Because I know some people, when they see 18, they might, you might be that person that was 3 and 6. <coughs> or maybe for 24, you were the person that did 4 and 6. You're fine. You're still in the same boat. Everyone's still okay. Okay, for 9. So, Hannah, what are numbers that multiply to 9 now? 3, right? 3 times 3? Alright, this is what you should have no matter how you did the top. This is how it should have looked. Does that make sense now? So, if you're that 3 and 6 person, you came up with this too. Okay, now, let's keep going. So, um, Liz, um, um, how do we break up 12? What are the numbers that multiply to 12? 4 and 3. Okay, so we're, uh, we're going to do the 4 and 3. Okay, I'm a, I agree with that. Okay, Cole, how do we break up the number 4? Um, 2 and 2. 2 and 2. Alright, so, so, so here we go. So there's the top. The bottom is, I'm going to break the 4 now to be 2 and 2. And so there's the bottom. Did everyone somewhat get to that? Okay, so you had a bunch of numbers on top, a bunch of numbers on the bottom. Now we start crossing things out. So, Sean, what are the first numbers you see that we can cross out? Um, 
two, yeah, I agree with that. Boom, those twos are gone. I agree with that. Same case, and what's another number I can cross out? Three. Three. One three at least. Okay, is there anything else I can cross out here? No, because there's nothing left. Nothing max at top and bottom. So, uh, Elizabeth, what do we do next? a good lead into our finish up this one problem that we're on. I want to talk about why this is kind of a goofy problem. It's 5 over 30. Um, now, 5. Can you break up 5 at all? No. Okay. So, uh, so the 5 is on the top, right? Um, what about 30? Uh, yes. yes. 5 and 6. 5 and 6. All right. That's what some people think. All right. 5 and 6. That's fine. Maybe you're that 3 and 10 person or 2 and 15. It really doesn't matter. So we'll go 5 and 6. Um, now, can we break up 6 even further? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 6 is what? Yep. Alright, so now here's the goofy part. When you get down to this point, now you can start crossing out things that they have in common. So they have fives in common. And this is where it's goofy. What's left on the top? Zero. Yeah, nothing right now, right? You're looking at that and you're like, well, there's nothing on top. So the answer is you know the answer is zero, or or they think the answer is six. It's not. The idea is that you broke up the five wrong. Five actually can be broken up. Five and one. Five and one. That's this is the prime rule. Five and one is five. That's the goofy part that always catches people. So really, on the top, you still have the number one. It's still up there. That's what you need to realize. So 
if you're that camp that you forgot to, you know, the one up there, if there's nothing left on the top, there's always a one sitting there. That's what you just need to feel like. Okay, on the bottom, what's two times three? There's your answer. The one out of six. That was just something I kind of wanted you to see. Now, if we do the pie graph or the, the, the brownie graph, you know, the bar graph, uh, I'm going to go the pie graph route. Uh, so we need to make a panel of six. Like that. Um, we need to have one out of six. <laughs> One out of six. One Okay, are we comfortable with this stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first couple of problems they're going to give you. They're going to give you pictures like this. They're going to ask you what the fraction is for. Easy, easy. The second part of your homework, they're going to give you a fraction, and I want you to simplify it as far as you can. And whatever your simplified version is, that's the one that you correct. So you're going back. So it's pretty straightforward. So I think the first ones are two first, two first. All right, but here's your homework. It is due tomorrow, and I know that's a rough start um, because um, we don't have school Wednesday, and I'm gone Thursday. So um, I want this due tomorrow. Um, so it's page, uh, let's see where we at. Page 60, one through nine. It's the only exercise on the page. And then page 63. 1 through 9, and you got to do exercises B on this one. So make sure you're doing B, exercise B. They're at the bottom of the page. That's what's going to be staying on the page. Okay. Um, questions on what you have to do here. The first ones are going to give you the picture, you give me the fraction. The second ones, they give you the fraction, you give me the picture and variant. That's it. Okay. All right. Once you kind of work on that. Um, probably tomorrow we'll we'll do kind of a review of what we're going to go into for Thursday. Um, you know what homework you're going to have for Thursday. Um, we'll probably look at our test paper tomorrow. I'll look at our ones back. I'll make sure Alex is actually go through all the test stuff. So if you choose to retake, we we'll retake them next week. Yeah, there should be one in the back half. So just make sure you return that before you leave. Um, back cabinet. Yep. So open up the doors. Yep. Yep. Those doors. It'll be top shelf. If you can reach that. And you can always drag it out. Oh yeah. Can you still figure out what the thing is? Yep. You just have to do the fraction. The the first ones should be super easy. You might have to do some counting. I want to know what the original fraction should be. No, not on those first ones. Those first ones, I just want to know what the fraction is. That's it. It's going to be simplifying plenty later.
track line forward. On those, you have a simple line on the page 63, right? The one through nine. Okay. On the bottom, you have the simple line, then you get a picture of four. Right. Yep.
Yes, yes, yes. 